morning from Montana. It's a beautiful rainy morning. Uh, we're curr currently staying at Goose Bay Dispersed. It's a free camping area right next to this lake. We even have a private little beach right here. It's not sand, but it's rocky. Some beautiful rocks around here. Some great skipping rocks. Look at that. It's really pretty. So there are a lot of sites, both where we're standing on this side and then over there too. And there's also a campground over there where you can pay to stay. I think it's 40 bucks a night or something like that for full hookups. Uh, we called them and they said we could come there and get free water. And if we want to dump our trailer, it would be $10. So we're definitely doing that on the way out. So today we need some groceries, so we're going to head into Helena. I uh, have never been there before. We've been to Missoula, so we're really excited to see the capital. See what it's all about. So how do you pronounce the capital of Montana? Helena. Helena? <laughs> In Sweden, it would be Helena. Hey, Lena. Helena. <laughs> Is she related to Hannah, Montana? <laughs> lunch today I looked up spots in Helena that would be good for lunch and I found this place called Bad Betty's and they're actually located out of a food truck right now they have a restaurant somewhere downtown but right now they're in a food truck and they're a barbecue joint so we got their special today which was called burnt ends and it's not brisket it was something else because I can't get the brisket right now but ooh, that looks good so I got the burnt ends and tater salad it does look really good. And I got the sinful slaw. Oh yeah. Yummy. Man, that smells so good. I think this is gonna be awesome. So. Awesome possum. We'll let you know if you should try it out. This is so good. This coleslaw has some sort of spice on it, so it's got a little bit of a kick behind it, and it's so good mixed with the, the barbecue sauce. It's very it's good. yummy. Definitely worth it. Yeah, mine is good too. Because of COVID, we couldn't explore everything in Helena, so we chose things that were mostly outdoors and away from people. The first thing we checked out was the Cathedral of St. Helena. We like visiting old churches because they're usually a big part of the area's history and they're often open to visitors. The cathedral was built in 1908 and finished in 1914. It's modeled after a church in Austria and has a Gothic Revival style. The inside was impressive with 59 stained glass windows. It's a great place to visit if you love art and architecture. We then headed downtown and did a short hike up to the iconic fire tower. It was built in 1876 and used to spot fires in the city. And even though we couldn't climb it, we still got a great view of Helena. A block or two away, we ran into Reader's Alley, which is another historic part of the city that is still standing. Reader's Alley is named after its builder, Louis Reader, who built the tiny apartments that housed the miners in the early days. Right next to Reader's Alley is the Pioneer Cabin, which is the oldest house in Helena. In the beginning, the miners called it the Last Chance Camp, but in the fall of 1864, the town was officially named Helena. 
Now, Reader's Alley is home to a number of small businesses and the Helena Visitor Center. Across the street from the alley is the walking mall and historic Last Chance Gulch. The rain really started to pour as we made our way down, but we still enjoyed looking at the many murals and statues along the way. To get a break from the rain, we walked into this coffee shop called the General Mercantile, also known as the Merc. We warmed up with some good coffee and headed towards our last stop, the Montana State Capitol. So how do you rate this state capital out of all of them that you've um, seen? It's more unique than like Utah's and even probably Idaho's, but it's not super... The one in Salt Lake is cool though, because you can like you get a cool view of the town. Yeah, that one's cool. When you're up on top, a lot of stairs. But it doesn't look as cool. Like the building's pretty. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this one's all right. I like the color of it. Today is Midsummer's Eve in Sweden, and we're going to be making some food to celebrate it. Uh, pretty much any holiday in Sweden is celebrated with a bunch of really, really good food, which we don't have most of it, because it's a lot of like pickled herring, uh, smoked salmon, Swedish meatballs, of course, um, what else? Some sausages, snops, a lot of really, really, really good food. Um, we can only do Swedish meatballs, and our closest version of the sausages which is little smokies so that's what Jens is cooking right now is some Swedish meatballs for us um, we're gonna have it with boiled potatoes as you know potatoes are the best I uh, got our little smokies one thing that we do have from Ikea that we always stock up on Ikea is closed right now so we can't get anything else but um, is their uh, mustard which is really good and Lingen jam, lingonberry jam, which is something they have on the side of pretty much any meat entree. It's really, really good. So yeah, I'm sure these are going to be awesome. I'm excited. And there you have it. Our best way to do midsummer food. I mean, we're missing like five or six, ten things, but <laughs> we do the uh, best I, that we I can. I think we're just missing the herring, pretty much. Uh, other than that, I think we're pretty good. I dare everyone to go to Ikea and get some caviar and try it out. It's just very salty. feed it to your kids and see how they react after it on YouTube. like the best place for skipping runs. They're so flat. Yeah, one more try. 